welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing another pouring experiment with mica powder, trying to see what kind of cool effects I can get. Um, this is the third video now where I've done different experiments with pouring. My last one that I put up, I got some really interesting effects. So if you're curious how I got these coasters, go check it out. Um, it's one of my uh, experimenting with different pouring techniques videos. But today I'm going to try a few different things. Um, so I wrote down on my paper here what I'm gonna do so I don't forget. <laughs> um, and the first one here on the left, I'm actually gonna do a dirty pour. I saw this in another video and I wanted to try it. So I'm gonna try two different colors of mica. And today for these, um, all four of these coasters, I'm using this blackish green from Upstart Epoxy. I just got this um, yesterday, so I'm excited to play with their mica. And then this dusk pink color from Artisan Pigments that I got on Amazon. So I'm gonna use these two mica powders. Um, and then, so in this one, I'm gonna do a dirty pour with the two mica colors and the uh, Pinata Blanco Blanco as a sinker, just to see what happens with that. In this one, I'm going to do two rings of mica, one with the pink and one with the turquoise color, but I am not going to do a center pour of clear. So I'm going to pour the clear first and then do the two rings and then leave them alone. I'm not going to pour more clear in the center. This one, I'm going to pour a clear base first and I'm going to do a puddle pour with the two micas. So I've done puddle pours several times, but I've not done them on top of a clear base. So I'm curious about that. And then this one, I've also seen this in several videos where people, um, they'll put a ring of color around the edge, then they pour the clear, and then they do another ring of the same color over top of the first one that they poured. And when they flip it over, it has this really cool effect where it's smooth. And then um, you start to see like these, these effects, but it's smooth on the edge instead of this crackly effect. So I wanna give that a try. So got um, all my notes down and I have mica powder on my hands. Um, when I work, I wear a mask. So I will be wearing my respirator. Um, if you work with resin, you should definitely wear one. This is the respirator that I wear. Um, I use a no VOC resin. I use the Naked Fusion Artist resin. This is a one-to-one -one resin. It's a fairly thick resin. I know some of them out there are, are pretty thin, they're more watery. This is pretty thick, but I do prefer the thicker resin. Um, you can always warm it up a little bit. That helps to thin it out. But that's the resin that I'll be using today. And um, like I said, I'll have my mask on. So any um, voiceover that you hear, I'll be recording later um, after I film this. So let's get going. So my first step when I am doing a pour like this, where I'm gonna um, be pouring mica or something around the edges and I don't wanna disturb the edges by running a toothpick around the sides, I just spritz with rubbing alcohol and that helps keep the bubbles down. So that's what I did first. And now you can see I just poured the clear layer in, I'm hitting it with a heat gun and then just spreading it out, making sure it's um, covering the entire bottom of the coaster. And now in the second coaster, I'm pouring that first ring of color. And I'm pouring the second ring over top of it. So this is the one that I'm not going to pour clear into the center and push them out to the sides. I'm just gonna let them spread on their own. In that third coaster, I'm doing the puddle pour.
and now I'm putting that ring of color around the edge and what I learned from this <laughs> is that that ring of color needs to be a lot bigger I didn't put enough color down and you'll see that at the end of the video when I show you the results but I did not get what I was hoping for <laughs> so but I'm uh the technique is there pouring the ring first then the clear and then another ring on top but like I said, I did not use enough um, on that first ring. Now I'm getting my uh, dirty pour ready. So I just poured a little bit of the Blanco Blanco in there. And now I'm pouring the green mica on top of the pink. And I'm not going to mix anything together in that cup. I'm just going to leave it like that and pour it. Now I'm just putting some iridescent flakes in the center just to add some interest. And I'm going to push those down into the resin. And I'm being very careful not to actually touch the coaster with a stick. I don't want to um, scratch the mold, but just gently pressing them down. And then I'm going to put a little bit of clear on top to cover them up. And then you can see um, pouring the clear on just pushed them out um, out of the center so i'm just adding a little bit more there's such a pretty effect i really love these um, iridescent flakes i'll put the link for all all the supplies that i use i'll put that in uh, in the uh, comments below this And here is a close-up look of the coasters right after I finished all of this. So you can see what they're looking like. Good morning. Well, it's morning for me. <laughs> um, so these have been drying overnight. They're all cured. And I am dying to flip them over and see what they look like. So we'll start over here. This is the one that we did the dirty pour. I guess I'll show it to you close up first. <laughs> I'm just excited. I want to get in there. Okay. Oh, that looks so cool. <laughs> that uh, Blanco Blanco made some amazing feathery effects. Oh, that's so pretty. Definitely going to be using that technique again. All right, this one I just poured the two rings of mica around the edge, and then I did not pour more clear in the center. So this one's actually thinner. Yeah, it's still a little flexible even. Okay. So this one isn't showing as much definition around the edges with the little effects they're kind of fuzzy looking and even the streaks in the center look a little blurry um it's not like let me grab this one so this one i also did two layers in my other video but after I poured the first layer, I did clear, and then I did a second layer. And you can see the streaks are much more well-defined versus this one. So I don't think that that's from not pouring the clear. I'm almost wondering if it's because of 
the mica. It's the first time I've used that mica. I'm not sure. I'll have to do some more experiments with it. Okay, this was the puddle pour. I put the clear layer down first. It's not much to look at on the back. It's got kind of that cloudy look. That is very cool. Very interesting. These are all looking a little cloudy to me versus the last experiment I did where they were a lot more defined. And the only difference is the brand of mica. So I'm, well, obviously the different pouring methods too, but I don't think that that would be creating such a furry, blurry, fuzzy effect. Okay, and then this is the one where I poured the ring of mica, then I poured the clear, and then I did another ring of mica. And I can already tell I didn't use enough mica. This is very see-through. And you can see the ring around the edge is really tiny. So I'll have to do this experiment again, but just pour more down. I used a very thin stream. So, yeah. And again, this one is just super blurry looking or soft. It doesn't have these nice sharp streaks. So it's very interesting how different products, you think it's the same type of product, it would give you the same effect, but it definitely does not. This one I think is my favorite. Very, very cool. All right. Well, those are the results from this experiment. I will be doing more. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button and click the little bell so that you get notified whenever I have new videos posted. But thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.